Well, hello everyone. And in this series, I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of changes that are coming across between the Trump and the tax Biden changes, right? I'm sure you've been hearing the media. Uh, and as usual, you know that tax compliances could be complicated and they could be very confusing. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to make it as clear as possible in a nutshell. So I'm gonna be splitting it into different series, hopefully short you know, episodes where you're gonna be able to understand in different segments, you know, what taxes changes are gonna be for you. And how's that gonna affect you, right? Because that's what the bottom line is. How is it gonna affect you in your certain tax taxes? So one of the things I'm planning to do and share with you um, is actually, like I said, as I split the segment, one of them is gonna be about how is the income tax bracket gonna change, right? Uh, versus to what Trump did. And the bracket, by the way, is everything that we deal from 10% all the way, right, to 37% that we change. And it's supposed to be validated, by the way, through 2025, if Biden doesn't change it. And then suddenly we're also going to have other changes, like what's going to happen to the itemized deductions, right? What's going to happen to the standard deduction? Are we going to get back the personal exemptions? Uh, you know, what's going to happen to retirement? Uh, the contributions that we can do, okay? What's going to happen with, you know, um, you know, especially other type of credits, like if we buy energized, you know, uh, energy efficient uh, appliances that we used to have wonderful credits for those. Um, so I'm going to be discussing, like I said, in different segments to make it as easy as possible for everyone out there. And by the way, if you don't know who I am, uh, and this is your first time meeting me, my name is Liz Soria. I am a tax accountant and also an accredited tax professional. And I've been doing taxes oof, for a very long time, over 16 years. And um, I have been working pretty much uh, for myself uh, for over a decade and helping many individuals and also small businesses uh, make savvy decision because I really believe that, you know what, if you have the right tools and information on your side, you're able to make really smart decisions. So anyhow, let's go ahead and jump in. And if you do need help, feel free to reach out to me and my team. Uh, definitely we do a lot of tax advisory and consultations to help you minimize your taxes and reduce your headaches. Um, and I think there's nothing better to reach out to an expert before you click that submit and you do yourself a tax return, then later on you might have to amend and then you kind of open a can of worms, you know what I mean by that. So I always tell, you know, be smart about it. Try to avoid your any, any kind of issues with Uncle Sam and um, and the better it is for you, right? The loopholes, loopholes are there and I mean, you need to take advantage of those, but you have to have the right source and support and information um, before you know making a decision. So let's go ahead and get started with some of these uh, series. Then I guess I'm going to do a breakdown to help you out understand a little bit more of this complexity. Okay. All right. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump in and uh, and let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get started. We're going to get started with segment number one. In this one, we're going to be talking about how you know, uh, Biden's individual tax proposals compared to the current law. Now, the big changes with this right now that I have noticed is that right now I'm actually sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see that. I wanna make sure that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, I believe it is. All right, so first thing there's gonna be probably a change and it doesn't surprise me, it's gonna be the tax bracket. If some of you might recall, we had up to 39.6, it was the highest tax bracket for anyone who, what we, consi what we consider a high earning income taxpayer, okay? Now, uh, what Trump did was he lowered that bracket to 37%, and, uh, and that's still validated through 2025. However, remember, these are proposals, okay? So it doesn't mean that it's, 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 it's completely finalized. So there could be a lot of changes even after I create all these episodes um, to bring you up as much information up to date. So please... Be like I said, stay you know tuned for any other changes. I will be uh, letting you know as soon as possible. Um, so the tax rate, the highest right now currently thirty seven percent. Well, Biden is saying, hey, 
I want to get a 39.6, which was the actually original bracket. So anyone who's currently paying 37, they're going to see their taxes go up to almost 40%. That's correct. And then the next, uh, you know, section I think is really important to discuss is capital gains and dividends, right? So if you are investing in the stock market or whether you have certain, you know, um, uh, investments that you do with assets, right? Those are actually taxed not as ordinary, but if not as, as a capital tax. Now, here's the big change. As you know, we had a long capital gain that could be from zero all the way up to 20%, uh, again, depending on your bracket, um, but that was the maximum that you were paying capital taxes. It will be 20%, which was phenomenal. Well, now, uh, Biden is saying, hey, listen, you know, we need to do a tax long term where dividends are actually being taxed ordinary, meaning there's going to be regular income tax on that uh, portion of your um, investments. And now don't don't, you know, get too scared right now with that. This is only for high earners. OK, high earners who are high earners. Well, anybody making over a million dollars right here. Okay, as so I'm showing here on the screen. So if you are in that threshold, you're making over a million in your capital uh, gains, then guess what? You are, he wants to propose, again, this is a proposal that you're going to be taxed ordinary tax versus to the maximum of 20%. So if this does go through, there's a lot of tax planning and, uh, you know, advisory that you're going to need to really uh, make the best decisions at this point. Now, um, the 3.8, which is called the net investment income tax, it seems like that's going to remain the same, okay? And remember, that's only for individuals that make over $200,000 for singles, and for Mary Fani Jolie, for people who are making over $250,000. As far as I know, that's going to remain the same. You're still going to have that additional tax at 3.8. And then we also have a what is called an exclusion from capital gain tax of the two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. So what does that mean, Liz? Well, for an example, what that means really is that if you have uh, your uh, your residence, right, your own your own home, uh, normally you wouldn't pay any capital gain in that property. Uh, not only as long as you have been two years out of the five years living in that residency, but also up to $250,000, you don't have to worry about that, okay? Uh, because again, it's a qualified home sale, all right? Now, if you marry finally jointly, that goes up to half a million, $500,000. So any gains that you made prior to that, uh, that, that amount, you don't have to worry about pay, paying capital gain, which is a, a huge benefit, right? So that seems to stay the same. Like I said, the big change here is really has to do with the long current, the long term capital gains for people who are paying, they're making more than a million dollars in that type of asset, which is capital gains. Okay, they're going to be starting to get taxed as ordinary, and that's going to be ugh, a pain in the neck for some of you. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the section of really um, itemized deduction. As you know, our standard deduction would from a increase. So our personal exception was completely, you know, um, uh, removed out of our tax laws. And now we have a larger, you know, um, deduction as a standard deduction, right? Now, I think that that really affected a lot of families, especially if you had more than two children. Um, because that personal exception really helped a lot, didn't it? But now it's gone. So what, what really right now um, Biden is trying to do is I think there will be a possibility um, of maybe hopefully bringing that back. And that would be great, again, for, law, for big companies, for, I'm sorry, for big families, um, they're missing out that personal exception. Now, one of the things I did want to mention that I think is important is that he might restore what we call the limitations. Um, and that means that um, when we have more people, because you always, when you itemize versus standard, you have to see what's gonna be higher, right? So if your itemize is still higher than your standard deduction, you always want to take advantage of that. Yes, I understand that you have to keep track of your receipts and you know all these tax, 
documents that you have to take care of. But remember, it's your money. So why not keep copies of your receipts if it's going to save you thousands of dollars? I think it's worth it, right? So anyhow, what, what Biden is saying now is that he wants to put a cap. That's right, a cap of how much um, you know, high paying uh, uh, taxpayers can deduct. So what he's proposing right now is up to $400,000. So that means, for an example, if you're making over $400,000, your highest deduction that you're gonna be able to itemize is gonna be capped at 28%. See, there was a lot of people who were very high paying, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, taxpayers, right? That they had incomes very high, and they would deduct a lot, a lot of money using the itemized deduction. Now he's saying, hey, hey, that's not going to be any more possible. Now there's going to be a maximum of 28% that you can deduct no matter how much you have spent. And that's pretty interesting. I think it is. Uh, it would make it a little more fair for um, you know the medium class. If you and if you are listening to this or you're watching this through uh, a video. Um, because I do have a podcast uh, also uh, sharing this information. I think what's important to understand is that definitely people who are, are in the high end as a, as a uh, you know, uh, income uh, earner, they really going to need to start making a lot more drastic uh, planning um, to be able to minimize those expenses. Because if it's true that that 28% is going to come through, that is the maximum you're going to get. Now, what does that mean for the rest of the folks? Well, one of the things I do like is that, if you recall, Trump also put a cap on the $10,000, meaning that um, for sales and local taxes, if you had a property and you own that property, you can only deduct up to $10,000 on that single property, okay? Before, pretty much you could do anything. And that was great because in a lot of states, property taxes are extremely expensive, right? So we have, for example, states like California and then we have you know, New York and other certain states, their taxes are extremely high. So 10,000 is nothing for them, right? These people are paying probably over 20, 30, $40,000 for a single property. And by all means, it doesn't have to be a mansion. It could be a small property. It's just that it has gained so much equity value, the property, that the taxes have been increasing that drastically. Now, what would happen with this if indeed um, you know, um, Biden is willing, okay, to, um, you know, reverse that, what we call the SALT, which is sales and local tax, uh, you know, uh, taxes, then that means that hopefully there won't be a cap anymore, 10,000. And that's going to be really favorable for a lot of you, okay? Um, and again, this got nothing to do with very high earners. It has to do with how much the value of your property really increased, Okay, so another thing that I think is going to be really important is, like I said, for those who are high earners over $400,000, this is a downside to you because you are going to be kept at 28%. So anyhow, so in the next, like I said, um, uh, episode that I'm going to be um, recording or has been recording at this point, um, I'm going to be discussing also things about the child tax credit. How much is that going to change, whether it's going up or going down? Uh, I'm also going to be talking about the dependent care credit, okay, and also about earned income credit. So stay tuned for that. And like I said, if so far you have liked my information, thumbs up, like, and uh, definitely share. And always feel free to subscribe if you want to go ahead and follow me. And, um, and I wish you the best. And like I said, just stay tuned. Stay abreast of what's going on because I think it's important as we start, you know, with a new president as an elective. And, and I think that mostly we want to be savvy of how the laws are changing. That way we can take, you know, benefit out of it. Would you agree? So anyhow, I will be seeing you in the next, uh, like I said, um, session. And I hope, like I said, you stay safe until next time. This is Liz Story again, your tax accountant and advisor. Um, take care.